Hey fellow photographers, what did you photograph today? Now we're gonna continue our 8x10 series pinhole camera build. Uh, I've already got part of it assembled. I'm gonna show you how I did that today. Uh, but if you haven't seen part one where we measure out all the dimensions for the different wood pieces we'll need, I'll link that up here. But besides that, let's see how we can uh, put everything together. We're back with the 8x10 build, and before we start gluing all these pieces together and showing you how I do that, uh, we're going to add a couple of functional pieces in the form of threaded inserts. And essentially what those are going to do, we're going to put one on one side and one on the bottom, just like I have on this other camera here. And these threaded inserts are great because the size of these threaded inserts is one quarter by 20. So what it means is we drill a hole in here and we're going to thread this in. And that way we can thread tripod mounting plates to these pinhole cameras. And I find this is a great solution. I mean, you can obviously glue a uh, tripod mounting plate or something to here, uh, but it's a little bit more of a permanent solution. This way you can screw and unscrew and you can change the orientation. And, and just, you know, because pinhole cameras require such a long exposure, it's a great way to be able to put this on a tripod, get those nice slow shutter speeds. It's not really a shutter, but you know what I'm talking about, slow exposure time. Uh, and it's very important for making uh, as crisp images as possible. So let's just get right into the build. All right, so here is our one quarter inch by 20 threaded insert, which is the standard sort of tripod socket. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the center of the bottom piece and one of the side pieces, and we're gonna drill a pilot hole. Now make sure with all these holes that we're drilling into the body of the camera that we don't drill all the way through the material because that's gonna introduce another area where light can leak in. So using a drill bit that's just a little bit smaller than the outer threads of the threaded insert, we're gonna drill another hole. And again, we don't wanna go all the way through the material. So a good way to do that is to just put a piece of tape over the drill bit that's less than the three quarters of an inch thickness of the wood so that we don't, you know, when we hit that tape, we know that we've gone far enough and we're not gonna go through all of the material. Now, there's a special tool that slots into the top grooves of a threaded insert, but this is a budget build and we're doing it on the cheap. So all you need to do is really get a quarter by 20 inch nut and a couple of uh, sort of bolts to tighten against the threaded insert so it stays in place and doesn't spin around. And when you do that, you can use a wrench or a socket to drive in the threaded insert by hand instead of using a drill and a special tool. So after it's all the way flush, we've screwed it all the way into the wood, we're gonna use a wrench to loosen the nuts and then you can just unscrew the bolt and then repeat that for the other side I like to do mine on the bottom plate for portrait orientation and one of the sides, doesn't matter which one, for landscape orientation pinhole photographs. So after we got that done, the uh, next step is going to put all the pieces together. The threaded inserts were $3.08 at the hardware store. So our total for this build so far is $29.27. So like I said, up next we're going to glue the four sides together, but we're not going to glue the face on yet. And if you saw at the beginning of the video, there's a big hole in it. We're going to drill that hole first before we glue the face on. So you can use your film holder as a guide to make sure everything squares up. Just make sure not to glue your film holder to the camera because that would be bad news. So clamp everything down and let it dry. I've turned the camera here on the sort of face of the camera so the film holder's on the top. Just in case gravity starts pulling some of the glue down, it's not going to drip onto the film holder and making it very difficult for that film holder to be removed once everything is glued down. So while that's drying, let's move on to the front face of the camera. So now we're back at the chalkboard, which means some math, and uh, don't let that scare you away. But basically the idea is, as you can see, I've already cut a large hole, a relatively large hole into this pinhole camera. Now this, actually, this hole actually has to be you know, significantly large because we're using a wide angle pinhole camera. The wider the camera, the larger this hole has to be. And now I'm going to explain why. So if you imagine sort of this point right here is our pinhole. In this case, in this camera that I'm building, we know that we're building the camera so that it has a focal length of 80 millimeters. And this down here represents the diagonal of the film plane. So remember, it's not just the sort of horizontal or vertical uh, orientation of the film. We wanna make sure the image circle covers the entire film so that longest distance is the diagonal. Uh, so we want an image circle that will encompass the entire film area. So that's why we use this as the diagonal. So on eight by 10 film, that's about 
325 millimeters, so half of that comes out to about 162 millimeters. And what we really need to know is what the angle of view of our pinhole is, and that's gonna be determined by the focal length and how far we need to project uh, in the sort of the film plane. So we can find this angle very easy using trigonometry. So tan of this angle, which I call theta, is 162 over 80, which means that theta in this case, when you solve for theta, is 63.72 degrees. So we know that in total, this is about two times that, so it's 127 degree angle of view, which is super wide. Now, like I said, the pinhole is gonna go on the back face of this camera, which means that if we're looking this way, we wanna make sure we're not blocking any of that light from the sides, otherwise we're not gonna be able to cover the entire image plane. So we need to know how big of a hole we need to drill given the thickness of the wood on, on the front plate in order to not block any of that light. So because this angle is theta, and this is you know a straight line, and this is another 90 degree line, it's uh, perpendicular, we know that the angle right across is also theta, which means that because this makes a right angle, this angle here, which we're now concerned with, is just 90 degrees minus theta. So 90 degrees minus theta is 26.28 degrees in this case. And since we know the thickness of our wood is 0.75 inches, we're gonna use the same trigonometric property using this angle, so tangent of 26.28 degrees is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So the opposite side we know is 0.75 inches. And here we have x, our unknown. So it's 0.75 over x. We just multiply by x, uh, divide by the tangent of 26.28. If you're doing this on your calculator, make sure your calculator is reading in degrees, not in radians. And we get that x. Now, because this is inches, this is also inches. So x is going to be 1.519 around there inches. So because x is only half of this circle, it's basically the radius, the whole diameter of the circle has to be over three inches. So we have to make a hole big enough. Uh, it has to be at least a little bit over three inches uh, in diameter so that the light is not blocked from this thickness of this wood. So what I did is I basically just on the, be on the safe side, I drilled a four inch hole. So a two inch radius gives us ample coverage, nothing to worry about there. So next part is we're gonna take the front of this camera and we're gonna drill this big hole. Now we know we need a large hole. In this case, I'm drilling a four inch hole, but where do we actually place the hole? We wanna place the hole in this build in the center of the image area. So now that the pieces have dried, I've flipped over the camera with the film holder still in the back and I've cut a piece of paper to fit the uh, inside dimensions of the film holder. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the piece of paper in there and I'm tracing along the edge of where the film is. So there's a little ridge where the dark slide uh, meets the film holder. I'm basically tracing that edge. So that gives me the actual film location. And what I want is the pinhole in the middle of that film area, which is not necessarily the middle of the face of the camera. So I've made this template, I found the center of the film area, and now we're gonna transfer this to the face of the camera to know where I should drill the center of my giant hole. Placing the template on the face of the camera, making sure it's centered, it should have a 3 8 inch border all the way around. Placing that in the center and using a punch to mark the center of the hole, uh, we now have exactly where we need to start drill. Here I'm using a hole cutting drill bit. Uh, if you don't have access to these or one large enough, you could just as easily drill a small hole and then use a jigsaw or even use a handsaw if you have a wide enough uh, blade there to cut out the giant hole in the face of our camera. If you're using a hole drill bit, I recommend drilling about halfway through the material first and then turning the piece upside down and then drilling the other half. That way it gives you a little bit cleaner lines. It just makes everything look a little nicer. Now I've also marked this piece which direction is the top so I know which way it's going to go in the camera because the hole is a little bit off center. Last but not least, we're going to fit the face of the camera to the other four sides by gluing it all together and letting that dry. So we're almost there. We have our eight x 10 pinhole camera with all four sides glued together. We've drilled our big hole in the front of the camera and we've glued the face to the camera. We also put in some threaded inserts to make things easier to mount things to a tripod. And as you can see, I've also painted the inside of this black for now, uh, which I'll go over in the next video. But basically the purpose of this is to avoid internal light reflections. 
Um, but yeah, so basically we have the basic building block of our camera. And then in the next episode, the last thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna do a little bit more blackboard science, uh, talking about why I chose the pinhole diameter that I did to get the optimal sharpness for this focal length. And we're going to attach the pinhole to the camera. And by the end of next episode, we will have a fully functional eight by 10 pinhole camera, a super wide angle, 80 millimeter. Uh, so stay tuned for the next episode. And I'll have one more follow-up episode where I'll probably stain this and you know just make it look a little bit cosmetically better. Although this natural wood look looks pretty cool. But I'll probably stain it like the other one, you know, kind of like nice cherry kind of color. Uh, it just makes things very, you know, look a little cleaner. And we'll attach some of this hardware, like I said, these little hooks and pins for uh, guiding composition and that kind of stuff. So next video, attaching the pinhole. By the end of that video, we'll have a fully functional camera. Video after that, just some you know minor touch-ups here and there, making sure everything's light tight and stuff like that. So don't forget to check out my other videos on pinhole photography and other types of photography, other science of lenses and aperture, shutter speed, everything like that. I'll link a few videos here and here that you can watch. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking here. Uh, no enable notifications for the next video to go out where we attach the pinhole and lots of future videos coming and I'm gonna try and do something special for Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day this year. So definitely stay tuned for that. And until then, as always, happy photographing.